This is Yogeshwar 7000 again and I'm back on another interesting topic on Vedic Astrology and today we'll be talking about the gemstone emerald and its uses and how you can use the power of emerald to enhance your luck. Now as per the ancient scriptures, the ancient sages uh, like uh, if you go as far as Brigu who is considered to be the father of Vedic astrology and then subsequent sages like Parashara and Jaimini, Atri, Gautam, so on and so forth in the Krita Yuga or the Sat Yuga they have not mentioned a lot about gemstones as remedial measures but in the recent times the recent astrologers and scholars have used the power of gemstones very effectively and um, they have associated uh, a gemstone to a planet so like for example sun is associated with ruby moon is associated with pearl so people who have not watched my earlier videos please refer to those and today we'll be talking about the gemstone emerald which is linked or related or associated with the planet mercury so let's let's first understand as to what mercury is and mercury as you know the name of mercury in sanskrit is buddha and uh, it is um, a planet of buddhi which in Sanskrit buddhi in English we translated from Sanskrit to English it is the brain so it is directly associated or directly linked to your intellect so that's how Mercury Buddha is named as well and uh, it is also known as the prince amongst the planets you know a young prince just like Saturn is considered to be an old man and uh, Mars is considered to be a warrior so the planet Mercury is associated or linked as being a youngster you know a young person uh, like a teenager or maybe in his early 20s young guy young man young man like a prince that's how, that's how it's he's he's looked at in Vedic astrology so people you'll see with the uh, strong influence of mercury on them themselves are very young looking so as to say you know they look younger than their age well that's one of the things but yes intellect is directly related to the planet mercury now as per the Puranas uh, how mercury was born was because of the planet moon and uh, the planet moon had an illegal union or an, a union which was not uh, considered to be you know it was outside marriage so as to say he had a, an affair with uh, the planet Jupiter's wife and out of their union out of the union of Jupiter's wife and moon the planet Mercury was born and uh, there's a whole long story so people who have not watched my earlier videos please refer to those I've made uh, videos uh, both from the point of view of Puranas and and also from the point of view of uh, Jyotish or astrology why Mercury is inimical towards moon because he considers moon as his father who seduced his mother who was already married to Jupiter or Brahaspati or Guru which he does not consider so as a result you know he was always called an illegitimate son so as to say of Jupiter so that's why he hates moon he doesn't like moon and that's why uh, I've made a video where a conjunction between moon and mercury is not considered good so if you're interested please refer to that video so that was the story from the Puranas but uh, yes the color associated with the planet Mercury is green and uh, Mercury is generally a sexless planet it's considered unique like Saturn Saturn is also so whenever there's an influence of Mercury and Saturn uh, related to the houses like the seventh house which is about relationships and physical union mercury is not considered to be 
a good planet uh, to be associated with the sixth house because it's sexless and uh, it's also very restless because it's very close to the Sun I think the closest no or the farthest mercury can get from Sun is about 27 degrees if I'm not mistaken and uh, and then you know it goes back back and forth uh, and it stays very close to the Sun and uh, actually mercury sun combination is also considered to be very good it forms a very auspicious yoga called the buddha aditya yoga aditya means sun and buddha means mercury and it gives extreme intellect and mercury and sun are extreme friends as well but the problem comes when mercury gets too close to the sun and uh, there's a good possibility why because I just told you the farthest mercury can go from Sun is 27 degrees so there is a very good probability and possibility the Sun gets too close to the Sun I mean mercury gets too close to the Sun and as a result becomes very combust and then once it becomes com combust it loses its energy it loses its luster it loses its ability to do good and it loses its good quality and that's when the problem arises and to give power to mercury the gemstone which is associated with the planet mercury which is related to the planet mercury is emerald and that's used very effectively by by modern day astrology i wouldn't say modern but you know until about a thousand years 1500 years uh, these gemstones started to become very popular as being used as remedial measures so uh, as we know mercury is considered i just mentioned it's a prince it's also a smallest planet out of the nine planets and it rules over education because it's intellect it rules over intellect and uh, communication as well so some of real good writers lecturers teachers traders trade it's a rajasic planet it's all about money creating wealth and money traders uh, varni jazz it's called in sanskrit you know uh, any kind of trade especially the stock trade anything which can make quick money is is linked to the planet mercury so all kinds of businessmen and in the human body it's linked to the nervous system and the lungs and also the intestines sometimes of course intestines again it overlaps with the uh, saturn also but uh, mercury also and lungs also overlaps with uh, the planet moon but then it also rules over lungs why because if you look at the chakra it rules over the heart chakra and uh, that's where the lungs are and sometimes mercury is linked to the heart as well because it rules over the heart chakra although heart is directly related to the planet sun so there are lots of overlaps here but generally you know the nervous system which again you know there's an overlap with saturn as saturn as well but mostly nervous system is directly related to mercury lungs also along with an overlap with the uh, moon just like i have i just mentioned so uh, also as we discussed that uh, mercury is about intelligence and speech and and also very important humor and wit that is an area completely completely under the purview of the planet mercury and uh, also mathematics and since it's good in mathematics mercury is related to mathematics it's automatically uh, linked to the uh, to astrology as well although of course astrology is linked to again overlaps with the planet Sun astrology overlaps with the planet uh, Jupiter so there are the planets also but mercury also you know people with good mercury also can make great astrologers and good mathematicians and mathematics professors or any kind of professors where they can communicate you know or communication where it uh, could relate to any kind of communication the media uh, the communication industry in terms of a cell phone uh, you know smartphones cell phones again it overlaps with the planet Rahu so I'm not gonna go into all those details because uh, there's a limitation as far as the length of the video is concerned but yes this is what mercury represents and then of course mercury as we know rules over the signs of virgo and gemini and its mul tacona sign is virgo mercury gets exalted in the sign of virgo and uh, it's a merchant by nature uh, so you know it comes under the vesha as well and it's green as we just uh, 
discussed friends of mercury are very very friendly to sun it's very friendly to venus so when it's conjunct venus when mercury and venus are conjunct it forms a great yoga which is called the lakshmi narayana yoga because mercury is about vishnu or narayana and uh, venus is about the goddess lakshmi so it makes a very very auspicious yoga mars not very friendly as a matter of fact mars and mercury are inimical and uh, and already already we discussed about the enmity or the relationship between mercury and moon because mercury thinks that moon did not do the right thing by seducing jupiter's wife his mom tara so uh, this is about the relationship between planets and uh, like i just mentioned that it's rajasic planet which is about making money and uh, you know anything rajas which is about enjoyment making money mostly money because venus is more about enjoyment and 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 uh, mercury is about trade and money directly related and of course it falls in uh, the sign of pisces that's where it becomes very uncomfortable so that's the reason why whenever mercury is ill placed is combust and uh, it is uh, you know in bad signs or if it's in its fall or debilitated then modern day astrologers and once again modern day is not real real modern but until about a thousand years 15 years 1500 years astrologers have used the gemstone emerald as you can see on the screen very very effectively uh, to take care of that problem and uh, the Sanskrit name of emerald is Panna and the best emeralds it's actually comes under the family of the beryl gemstones and the best emeralds are found in Colombia and uh, that's where you know uh, the, the right color and the right color of um, an emerald is the color of the blade of grass that's how you know you can find a great great color as far as just the color and of course you know other things also have to be taken into consideration you know uh, the luster whether it's got inclusions whether it's the right size whether it's the right shape whether it's cut to cut to the right shape but as far as color is concerned the blade of a green grass that's and in certain uh, scriptures it's mentioned that it's so powerful emerald can be so powerful uh, sometimes for a person who for who emerald is lucky it can be so powerful that it can blind a venomous snake as well it, it is so powerful but of course you shouldn't be wearing it there are rules uh, whether you can wear a gemstone or not you know some people wear uh, gemstones based on uh, the lagna whether uh, a gemstone is favorable to his lagna or ascendant some people consider or some astrologers recommend gemstones based on the moon sign some astrologers recommend gemstones based on the nakshatra or the nakshatra lord or which planet rules the nakshatra so if moon is in a in a nakshatra which is ruled by the planet mercury then they'll recommend it so there are several methods of recommending gemstones and i'm not getting into that but assuming that mercury is lucky for you or emerald is the lucky gemstone for you in other words uh the good quality gemstone can give you all these qualities which we have just discussed that can make you an excellent orator a speech uh, an excellent person a person can give excellent speeches or he can become a great communicator he could be can become a great writer he can become a great professor because it's about intellect he can become a great trader a stock trader a businessman all these good qualities can be enhanced with the power of the emerald and of course once again i'm repeating do not just experiment this, this yourself there are experts <clears throat> or there are expert vedic astrologers who will be able to determine if you needed to enhance the power of mercury through emerald and uh, in case uh, it does not suit you it can give you negative results in all these areas which i have just discussed so uh, 
be very careful in choosing whether you know you're going to be using this gemstone emerald or not because if it does not suit you if it's unlucky for you it can give you problems in all these areas which it represents so once again um, uh, the other flaws which has to be taken into consideration we discussed the best color and we've discussed the best place where you can find good emeralds in Colombia I think they're the muzo mines or how do you pronounce it muzo or muzo muzo m-u-z-o muzo mines that produce the best emeralds and the price of those emeralds can go as high as I don't know maybe you know the best emeralds which are clear with the right color or the blade of a grass and without any inclusion so without any defects in the right shape and the right cut can go as high as fifty thousand dollars fifty thousand US dollars per carat which is too expensive and then of course there are other countries which produce emeralds as well like Zambia is another producer of emeralds which uh, may not produce very transparent uh, emeralds uh, it may have little inclusions maybe whitish in color uh, you know uh, may not have the right luster and then you can find them pretty cheap but they work but of course you know have to be approved by by a Vedic scholar or a Vedic astrologer before you try it so even if a gemstone like an emerald is lucky for you supposed to bring you luck still you have to get it checked by a Vedic astrologer whether uh, and I know I understand that it's not easy or uh, it's not affordable for a lot of people to go and get a gemstone from Colombia but uh, even if you use a Zambian or gemstone or from maybe India as well and it's low in quality it does work but then has to be checked by a Vedic astrologer whether it has the inclusions or defects which are acceptable because there could be certain defects which are totally unacceptable so even if a emerald may be lucky for you and it can bring bad luck in case the inclusions are so bad or the defects are so bad that instead of getting you good luck it can it would bring you bad luck so uh, there's a little disclaimer here be very very careful first be careful about whether the gemstone emerald suits you or not and in case it suits you how low you can go on a quality uh, in case you're not getting a good quality emerald in the price budget you have so that has to be determined by a Vedic scholar or a Vedic astrologer so uh, these are um, a little you know tips as to how you can go ahead and buy a gemstone you know any dullness in the gemstone should be avoided any unevenness of color should be uh, avoided and yes you know there shouldn't be any holes uh, on the gemstones which you wear it should be the right carriage you know generally between five and six carat is a good uh, size of emerald you can wear and it should not be brittle uh, it should generally be worn on on gold don't wear it in silver uh, generally the best uh, metal to wear an emerald is gold because silver again it uh, it may represent the planet moon although silver sometimes represents Venus as well so there are different opinions by different astrologers on that a ring uh, which finger you should wear it ring finger or the little finger these are the two fingers where emerald is generally worn it's not worn on the index finger finger um, some people wear it on the middle finger but that's also not highly recommended that's more for Saturn so be very very careful as to what what uh, finger you wear it on and of course the Vedic astrologer is going to give you a guidance as to which finger to wear so look for nice luster in the gemstone like uh, I mentioned look uh, if there are no major foreign matters inside the crystal structure which you have it's a better family like I said so it's a better crystal so just make sure you know then not too many inclusions not too many foreign matters and um, if you're lucky you'll be able to get uh, a good uh, emerald and uh, a few astrologers are of the opinion that in case a real emerald how to find or how to differentiate between a real emerald or sometimes you know on the internet you may get uh, imitation emeralds which are not real 
and you may you know shell out a lot of dollars or money and in return you may not get a real emerald so some astrologers have recommended well a real emerald if it's placed in a glass what or or water or a glass uh, of water so as to say it'll radiate green light but the imitation will not radiate green light that's one way but i would i i don't think that's one real way of uh, judging or uh, testing a real emerald i think it's better to go and get a certification if you can get a certification from a uh, institute or a laboratory like a gia i think that's a better way of doing it because you're putting in so much money to buy a real emerald anyways and um, some astrologers can go as to as as extreme as saying that um, if a real emerald is rubbed against a piece of wood it does not change uh, its shine whereas if it's an imitation you could see that an emerald shine may change but once again you know don't believe in these things these are just beliefs and it's always better to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, get it tested by a good laboratory and how it's worn is you know there are uh, rituals to wear an emerald uh, you have to you know get the right mantra from the vedic scholar while wearing it and uh, generally it's always lucky to buy it on a wednesday and wear it on a wednesday as well if you cannot buy it on a wednesday at least wear it on a wednesday and uh, look at uh, the hora if the hora is of mercury and that's also a good uh, time to wear on a wednesday and um, uh, also uh, it uh, the, yeah the most important thing the show the stone should be open at the back so that it should turn it should touch your skin uh, because uh, you can get it mounted on uh, a ring but if the gemstone does not touch your skin it may not give you the desired results so every time you wear a jyotish stone you don't know, see the back of the stone touches your skin so you get a ring made in a way that the stone or the gemstone i should be saying not just the stone these are gemstones they the gemstone should be always continuously touching your skin and that's how you'll absorb the rays of mercury through the gemstone emerald and then of course like i said you know wear it with the right mantra the right time the right day and some astrologers go as to to an extreme of recommending you know get a yantra of uh, mercury and then you know do some puja and i don't think that's uh, i mean if you can do it that's very good but if you cannot do you know get a yantra and do a puja or a right uh, prayer to the planet mercury it's okay as long as you can wear it after dipping it in uh, in milk and washing it raw milk uh, and then washing it or then india in india they what they do is they take gemstones and they wash it with the river from the river ganges which is considered to be very holy and then they wear it so if you're in india and if you can get ganges water uh, and if emerald is this gemstone which you're gonna wear you know wash it in ganga jal as it's called or water from the ganges and the wear it on a wednesday and preferably preferably in the hora or the hour of mercury and see how it uh, affects you but if it does give you a good effect uh, and if you have taken the right recommendation you know you can um, you know first you can enhance the power of mercury and you can get rid of those problems which may have occurred in your birthstone and which may uh, you know the areas the significations of the planet mercury which uh, you may be suffering from or if you want to actually enhance the power of mercury which is already lucky both ways so hopefully you enjoyed this video in the meanwhile i will recommend subscribe to my channel and check out my website there is a link below and i'll see you with an interesting topic in vedic astrology very soon goodbye